Welcome back to glycogenolysis in biochemistry. My name is Kevin Tolkoff. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss the mechanism of glycogen phosphorylase. Recall that this enzyme is the main enzyme involved in depolymerizing glycogen. In fact, what it does is it takes the glycogen polymer and it finds a terminal end, a terminal glucose, and it removes that glucose as glucose 1-phosphate monomers. Okay, So glycogen phosphorylase does not simply hydrolyze off a simple glucose. It removes the end glucose parts as glucose 1-phosphate. And let's look and see exactly how that occurs. Now, initially, I want to point your attention to one thing. This right here is the glycogen polymer. Okay, this right here is the terminal glucose. We know that because this oxygen right here is not bound to any other glucose unit. So this has to be the terminal glucose, and the, glu the glycogen polymer is going to continue in this direction. And in fact, this where I'm breaking it off right here indicates that the polymer continues in the rightward direction as shown. Another thing, there's a phosphate in the active site that's allowed, and it's protonated on one of these oxygens right here. The phosphate is also stabilized by a pyridoxal phosphate coenzyme that glycogen phosphorylase has. Now, this oxygen initially is going to kick electrons onto this bond, which is going to eliminate the rest of this glycogen polymer. Okay? So suppose this glycogen polymer up here had 1,000 glucose units. After these electrons kick over here and eliminate the remainder, this remainder, which is shown over here, ha now has 999 units of glucose. And then this over here would be the terminal 1,000th unit of glucose. And as this polymer of 999 is leaving, these electrons deprotonate the phosphate that's in the active site, and that generates the completely tribasic and nucleophilic PO43- phosphate. All right? And that's what we're going to see down here. Now, when those electrons kicked onto this bond right here, now that generates an unstable oxonium species. And in general, in biochemistry, an oxonium is when an oxygen has a positive charge, particularly when it's bound to a carbon atom. So this is our oxonium species, and that basically generates this carbon being very electrophilic. In fact, electrophilic enough to where this phosphate now attacks this carbon and it forces these pi electrons back onto the oxygen. And that effectively generates this molecule down here, which is called glucose 1-phosphate. All right. And here's a question for you. Why is this enzyme called glycogen phosphorylase and not something like, I don't know, glycogen hydrolase or glycogenase or something like that? Well, those names would imply that it would be a hydrolase. It would simply use water to hydrolyze off the glucose units. But it doesn't do that. It, instead of using water as the nucleophile, it uses phosphate. Thus, this is a phosphorylase. And now we have a glucose monomer that is already phosphorylated, as shown right here. Now, what's our goal of glycogenolysis? We'd like these glucose molecules to be shunted into glycolysis. But what's the problem with that? Glycolysis either directly uses glucose or glucose 6-phosphate. So the 6 position is up here on the top. This is our 6 position oxygen. So somehow we would need to move this phosphate over to that position. And we're going to talk about how that occurs in another video. It turns out it's done by an enzyme called phosphoglucomutase, and it simply exchanges this phosphate and moves it over here. It essentially forms the isomer. Okay, and then glucose 6-phosphate can directly be used by glycolysis. Okay, so I hope this video made sense. Hope you learned a little bit about glycogen phosphorylase. In the next video, we're going to talk about the glycogen debranching enzyme and how it differs functionally from this enzyme. And then we're going to go into how we get these glucose monomers into glycolysis. Thanks for watching this video. Make sure to like this video and subscribe. Thank you.